I'm going to go through this somewhat quickly because we're running out of time. I know Mike has a decent length uh, presentation. So, um, yeah, I host a show called Where Did the Road Go? I've been doing it since uh, January of 2013. Both Mike and Josh are regular participants in a roundtable we do almost every week uh, on different subjects, as well as Red Pill Junkie, who is down in Mexico. Uh, I've had a lot of weird experiences over my life. And uh, they started with uh, spontaneous Kundalini arousal, and I was explaining to you that fate kind of made me aware of what it was, and it was ruining my life until I saw an ad for a book from Llewellyn on Kundalini. <laughs> and uh, beyond that, I had started practicing magic and such, and had a lot of experiences that I didn't until later connect to experiences in the UFO culture. It was actually with the streamers work that I started making connections with and realizing I was experiencing very similar things without the UFOs. The UFOs came later. So what I'm going to get to right here is uh, I'm going to give you some idea of where things happen. I'm from upstate New York. So for anyone who doesn't know, New York City's way over here. Upstate New York's way over there. It takes me about the same time to get here as it does for me to get to uh, New York City. So, New York's a big place. Uh, my radio station, Blue Dot, is where I live. The square is around Ithaca, where some of these events have happened. Uh, this is Ithaca. My radio station is right here. Our actual FM radio station. The square is a very unusual graveyard, which I'll get to in a moment. Uh, let's see. The First of all, New York State in general has a history of strange uh, paranormal stuff. Anything from Mormonism to Jane Roberts and Seth, which was in Elvira, to the birth of spiritualism, which was in Heightsville up by Rochester. Uh, but there's a whole, I think there's a book out called Upstate Cauldron talking about all the different stuff that's come out of the upstate New York area. Um, yes, all right. So this is the cemetery, and it's the uh, city of Ithaca Cemetery. It's very old. This here is a Buddhist monastery. The rumor is the Buddhists uh, put a monastery there because Ithaca is said to be the second most powerful spot of the planet. Second or third, if you have a tradition. Uh, and the monastery is the Nam, Nam Pinal Monastery. It's the North American seat of His Holiness Holiness and 14th Dalai Lama. This cemetery is a block away from it. Now, myself, I don't think uh, cemeteries are haunted necessarily. But when you get ones this old, I wonder if they're either put on spots that are already sacred and have something weird going on in them, or if uh, there's something with the liminality of this. Because what you got over here is you have downtown Ithaca. Up here you have Cornell University. It's literally right between them. Over here, connected to the cemetery, are actual houses. They share the same driveway. So it kind of exists in a sort of liminal place for a cemetery. The other, most of the cemeteries I've been in my life, I've never experienced anything weird. This one has a history for other people as well, of just very strange things. That's the entrance. As you can see, it's very nice. It goes up the side of the hill. It's 16 acres. Uh, includes a potter's, potter's field, two Jewish burial grounds, a Civil War memorial, and a firefighter's memorial. The first burial in the cemetery was Rachel Allen, a young child with family passing through Ithaca. She became ill and died in 1790 or 1791. She's buried in an unmarked grave. This area, the Civil War memorial, is where a lot of strange stuff has happened. Uh, the first experience I ever had here was a shadow person. And I've experienced a lot of shadow people and objects in my life, never out of the corner of my eye, always dead on. In this case, uh, well, we were playing hide and seek in the graveyard in the middle of the night. And uh, I thought my, was, there were four of us. Two of them, my friends ran off. We were looking for them. It's fairly dark. And I saw what I thought was my friend walking along here. Perfectly in view. He just thought, okay, it's dark. I can't see him that well. And then I heard him yell from around the corner. And I said, okay, so who's that? And they just disappeared. The next day, I went back and looked where they were walking. 
And that's where they were walking. And this shadow was bright, gliding smoothly and silently across that area. This is the trail that goes up behind the monument. Um, sometimes when you walk into this area with these canyons and this, this Civil War area, you get this feeling of oppression, like something doesn't want you there. Um, it's very, very strong. I mean, it makes you want to run sometimes. And other times, there's nothing there at all. Uh, one of the things I've learned in, when I've been trying to teach people different things, especially to deal with fear, is I'll have people, when you feel that oppression, walk all the way around the corner. It's very, very hard to do when you feel that way, because like I said, it makes you want to jump out of your skin. Um, if you can do it, it makes you feel very empowered. Nothing bad has ever happened to anyone. You see the memorial over here. I was walking with a friend of mine down this way, and I was looking over here to see if there's anything going to show up here. And while we were walking, a shadow person walked out right in front of us. I didn't see it, unfortunately, but she froze. Went completely pale, was on the verge of running until I grabbed a hold of her. Um, not someone who was easily frightened. But it walked right out the middle, she said, and then it just disappeared. This is up on top, the memorial's down over here. It's a circle of trees with this one stone here. A lot of times, especially from this point, you can see bits of light following you around the graveyard. Little pinpoints of light floating around. Um, four of us one day were up at night trying to pick up anything we could, take some pictures, and we found a cold spot. It was a fairly warm night. Found a cold spot, very, very cold spot that was moving around up in this area. And we were trying to follow it. And my friend puts out her hand, and she says, take a picture, it's right over my hand. And I don't know how well that shows up up there. You can see a slight light. Thing. To me, it looks like dust. The only thing that stood out is the fact that she said, it's right above my hand, and that's where I took the picture. The other dozen of pictures that I took, there's no dust in them, no nothing. So, coincidence? I would be toward coincidence, but it was still kind of interesting to me. Um, I did have one experience where I was walking with two people, and we literally had those lights moving around us like bugs. It was really freaky, and the guy we were walking with was myself and my girlfriend at the time. The guy we were walking with did not see that. The two of us were going, wow, what's going on? And he's going, we know what's going on. So now we're going to move into, I think it's here. Again, Blue Dots Rye Island. Over here is the Village Psychiatric Center. That's, that's what it used to look like. Uh, now it's been mostly retrofitted into a uh, prison where they take in uh, drug rehabilitation people. And let's see where did I have that. Okay, so the institution opened in 1869. They were actually looking to find better ways to treat the mentally ill. Some of their things they were doing at the time were still very primitive by our, our standards, but at the time they were pretty progressive. This down by Seneca Lake is a potter's field. They just bury patients here left and right. Most of them aren't marked. A few of them are. There's also a Civil War graveyard, which I'll show you in a minute. Up over here. There's a Jewish cemetery here and somewhere in here. Uh, they are currently trying to clean this place up and mark the graves. Uh, when I was a late teens, a bunch of my friends lived down here. And one night, we had nowhere to go. We had been up all night. We walked up here like we did occasionally. This is the entrance. There didn't even used to be a sign. Now you can see the sign there. That's the old Jewish cemetery sign. That's what it used to look like before they started cleaning it up. It was completely overgrown. You couldn't even, some of the, the tombstones were sinking into the ground. Here, with this tree, this is 20, 20 plus years ago now, so a lot of it's overgrown. We actually cleared out some of this area behind these weeds and stuff, built a trail over this tree, and built a bench we could sit at. The reason we did this, on top of having some place to go, oh, this is the remnants of the bench, which you can just barely see here. We came over the cliff, that's a cliff on the edge there, you can see. 
That's the remainder of the, uh, the bench. This is a stretch, which I'm going to get to the importance of in a minute. The tree we built the bench on is way down over there. And that's a far shot of the area. That's the view. Best I can with all the, the coverage, but at the time, we could actually, we had actually walk right up to the cliff and we'd sit there and just look out over the lake. It was just an astonishing view. So we built this little bench so we had somewhere to go. And it was completely hidden in the trees. At some point, we built a second bench. If I go back here, I'll give you an idea. The first bench was way over here. The second bench was somewhere in here. One day we were up there. And uh, this is one of the weirdest things that's ever happened to me. This is plain daylight. Our one friend is sitting on the bench over there. We have started going this way to build another bench around one of the other trees that weren't really successful. And while we were standing there, the tree facing the field started to shake and move. And we could hear thumping on the other side. And my initial response was, it's a buck. There's a lot of deer in the area. I thought it was a buck either threatening us or hitting the tree with its and you can feel the ground shaking. And uh, the two people who were with me, one of them, they both started freaking out. I walked around to the side. Shaking stopped. There's nothing there. I walked back around. The tree starts shaking again. My one friend is losing it completely. The other one also freaking out a little bit because he's not seeing the tree move. And we both stopped. We're like, you don't see this? He's like, <laughs> No, it's sitting perfectly still. And then they both really, really wanted to leave. And again, I walked out to the side, and as soon as I could get a clear shot, because you couldn't see through the bushes, everything stopped. There's nowhere for anything to have gone. As I showed you in the other shot, it's a pretty open area. If it was a bunker sign, there's nowhere for it to have run. And that was it. Then we had to leave. Because they weren't they weren't having it. Um, I came back by myself a couple hours later. This is the Civil War graveyard. So this sits back further. And when I went up there, you got kind of that odd stack and feel. Everything was dead quiet. And as you're walking this way, this way is the cliff of the lake. And I walked down to this point, and I looked down into these trees. And although I never saw anything, something very large was moving through the tops of the trees. The branches were falling and everything else, but there was nothing I could visibly see. After a while, it just stopped. The Oz, that sort of Oz factor never went away, and I just left after a while because nothing was happening. This is uh, one of the patients was actually the grave digger for a long time. They just put up this monument for him. Um, there used to be a building here, so he came in the entrance. If you remember, it kind of came up to the side. This is right at that corner. There used to be a building, and one day we came up and the building was gone. It was a stone building, and it had been smashed to rubble. So they must have just ground it down. Sitting in all the rubble that they then turned into part of the driveway was a grave one of the steel ones you saw earlier. Just broken and laying there, and I went, cool, a grave one. And I picked it up, and we brought it over to the bench with us. And I stuffed it under the bench. Now, no one knew this bench was there. You couldn't see it if you were in the field. A handful of our friends knew. No one knew I had this grave marker under there. I just thought it was me. One day, could we go out there? I reach under, no grave marker. So I'm like, well, who will take the grave marker? As we're leaving, I'm looking to my side, to a cliff, and the grave marker is sitting under a tree, right around this area, not that that helps, like that. Dirt is cleared off, completely inaccessible. I tried for about 10 minutes to figure out a way to get to this. No way to get to it. Three sticks completely on each side, laying there right next to the cliff, under branches of a sharp tree. I eventually got it back, because that's the kind of thing I do. Um, I just had, I had to break branches to get to it. There's no way anyone could have gotten to it. One side, actually two sides were a cliff, because it came to an end and dropped off. The other side, were we get penetrated from the bushes, and the side facing the field that I went through uh, was sharp branches. I literally had to break them to get in there. And then I took it while my friend was freaking out again and said, uh, This is mine. 
leave it over at the bench, and I put it back there, and it's never left again. I know this is not normal for most people, but it's normal for me. One other experience up here, which I always think of when I hear David Politis talk, facing away from the cliffs is this group of trees. There are grave markers in there. When I went up to take these pictures this week, I couldn't even see them anymore. This little corner here, same friend, yeah. name was Dave. I walked around this way and I walked into here and out the feeling like something was right on top of me. Everything went dead quiet. It was creepy as all hell. And after a few moments of that, even I was going, hey Dave, where are you Dave? He had walked around this way and I kind of quickly went over to see him. Eventually I walked back there and the feeling was gone. But even going up now, this place has a very weird feel that I've never felt anywhere else. And that's a full view of the thing going all the way back. You can see what a nice view you get of the lake from up here. And I'm going to go through a qu couple quick other experiences. This road, St. Frank from the other two stories was with me. He would do, this was before either of us could drive, and uh, he would randomly do things like, hey, let's take a walk. His actual goal was, hey, let's go see this girl I want to go see. <laughs> he wouldn't tell us, tell any of us that until we were almost there. So we're walking along, it's two o'clock in the morning, it's so dark you can barely see your hand in front of your face. We were going to a house way up here. And this was a fairly long walk, we never walked this far. Uh, we didn't bring a flashlight, because he didn't really have flashlights and didn't care. And we're walking down this road, and he stops to go off to the side to relieve himself. And I'm standing on the other side waiting for him. And we very distinctly hear footsteps. And I stop and I'm like, what? And I said to him, I'm like, you hear footsteps? He's like, what? And he's like, I do hear footsteps. Footsteps never changed pace, walked right between us. Never heard a peep out of anyone. Totally could have been a person. Um, but our logic was what idiot's going to be walking around at 2 a.m. without a flashlight on a back country road other than us. <laughs> uh, never, and the thing is, you heard two male voices. I would think you might slow down or speed up if you're by yourself because you don't know who they are and you can't really see them. But they kept a steady pace all the way through. So maybe it was just a person, but it seemed like a really weird place for somebody to be walking, two groups of people to be walking at 2 o'clock on a weekday morning. The light there I put in, this was the first time I saw a UFO. This was September 23rd of 2000. This is Cayuga Lake, if it was at the base of it. I was driving to my radio station one night. And from my right hand side toward the lake, I got blinded. And I'm thinking it's a car coming up from the driveway uh, because they, they go down steep. If someone's driving a truck and it's at the right angle, it's going to hit you just right. Look, and Goldberg lives right around here. Um, but the light kept going, and I'm like, what? Come on, why, why can't I see it? I kind of squinted through it. The actual UFO was about that height, and it went from there to about there. It was gigantic, and it was just lights. I couldn't see an actual graph because everything was too bright. There were two lights on the side, one on the top, one on the bottom, and lights racing each other through the middle of it from left to right. Multicolored lights, red, blue, green, just shooting at random speeds in between it. And I just kind of stopped and was like, whoa, what am I looking at? Is it can't be a helicopter, it can't be this, there was no noise. Uh, I tried to pull up and get a better view, and as I did, it sank down and disappeared. I couldn't actually see the lake from where I was when I stopped, but I could see that it was moving in front of these trees. You'll see how, you can kind of get an idea how big those trees are and how far away from the lake we are. So whatever it was was enormous. Whether it was separate lights or one object, I couldn't actually tell. Nothing else weird about it, no missing time, no nothing. Liminality, however, this was right after about three major changes in my life when this happened. This, this was by far the weirdest thing that ever happened to me. Let's see if I have the date on this one. This was 19, July 26th, 1991. This puzzled me for a very, very long time. This is where I live. This is out back of my house. The field is not mine. I would take, I still take walks at night a lot. I'm 
very much a night person. I like being outside at night. And I walked out back, pacing around, thinking about stuff, and I noticed there's a light in the field about where that light is. I put that in. It's not real. And it's a very faint light, and it's blinking on and off. And at first, I didn't think much of it. And then I'm noticing around me the whole landscape keeps lighting up like someone's taking a picture. And then fading out, lighting up, fading out. I've experienced this before. Don't know what it is, but it's something I have encountered before. So I start paying closer attention to the light, and I'm noticing that the light goes on five or, five or six seconds, off five or six seconds, or seven seconds, whatever it was. It was very meticulously timed. If I look directly at the light, it finished its on cycle, went out, and didn't come back on until I looked away. And that was a little freaky because there's nobody out there. There's nobody out there who would have known I was going to be out there. Uh, this is I live in the middle of nowhere. Then I look up at the moon, bright full moon, clouds moving across. As the clouds start to come to the moon, the moon pops through the clouds and starts vibrating. And I'm looking at that going, okay, well, that's impossible. Mind you, I've never done a drug in my life. I don't drink. Um, I was very clear-headed, as a matter of fact. I kept checking myself, going, okay, I'm hallucinating, obviously. I look back, the moon's where it should be. A few seconds later, it pops through and starts shaking again. All the time, this light blinking on and off in the field. For a long time, I had no idea. This went on until I went inside. I eventually just got tired of it and went inside. I was probably out there an hour with this stuff going on. My best guess? That was an earthquake. And I was probably in some kind of field that was altering my consciousness enough for these weird events to happen, because there's no logical sense to any of it. But it definitely goes down as the weirdest thing I've ever experienced in a completely normal state of consciousness. And the one I'm going to leave you with, before I turn this over to Mike, this is the back of my barn, a uh, very big barn. The field I just showed you is that way. I was up here one day conducting a ritual in the middle of the night. And my rituals are usually uh, things to clarify whatever path I'm supposed to be taking. And so I'm doing this, and I have a staff. And when I'm done, I tap the staff three times very solidly on the ground. Now I have this other bar. We call it creepy bar. <laughs> and this is just a little distance away. And as soon as I went boop, boop, boop in the grass, from this barn, I hear boom, 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 in the exact same pace. I think it's the only time chills almost froze me in place. I'm like, why did it have to be that barn? <laughs> Any other building, I would have been more okay with it except for that one. And I picked an especially creepy picture with the fog. Um, and I stood there for a while, because I could have walked the far way around back to the house, and I said, no, I gotta do this, I gotta walk past this barn. The whole time I'm walking past, I'm looking over the door, don't be a face in the window. <laughs> but I don't know why the one, I mean, you can see why it looks a little creepy. Um, other than that, I don't think anything's ever happened in it. It's just one of those things, every time I look up there, I'm always afraid there's just be some hideous space in one of those windows up there. Now we've got turkey vultures living up there, too. <laughs> so, uh, that's, that's about it. Want to leave room for Mike? Does anyone have any questions? <laughs>